Hi, I'm Big Ben with this week's episode of Equip Tips. Today we're going to be talking about light stands. For some of you, this may be very rudimentary and basic. Some of you probably already have your light stands. But those, there, those of you out there who are still getting into off-camera lighting and need to know what equipment to have to support uh, your lights and whatever stuff you might need. As far as light stands go, there are basically two types. Uh, ones that are based for more of transport and uh, I should say more lightweight, available for moving around stuff. Uh, they're very easy to transport. Then there's those such as this large C-stand here that are more, a lot heavier, can handle a lot more weight and are made for being in the studio. First off, let's start by talking our infamous aluminum stand here who uh, our relationship wasn't working out so we dumped them. But when choosing a light stand, it's very, very important to do your homework, do your research, and whether you're buying in, a, in your local camera retailer, such as Pictureline, where we're at today, or if you're online, as, as far as one of your online reputable dealers, uh, make sure you go ahead and read the specifications on what they can hold as far as the weight limits, uh, the height, and what they're designed to do. These stands come from Manfrotto. Uh, these are your basic light stands. They cost about $75 and for general use of holding up and down lights, uh, speed lights and your heavier stuff, they work just fine. Uh, please keep in mind these are an aluminum stand so they, so they are not gonna hold, if you have a giant, if you're doing video and you have a giant airy light or something that's probably over 20 pounds, I probably wouldn't be putting this on here. The other thing to look for, for when you're buying a light stand uh, and this might seem very common sense is to look at what type of mechanisms are the actual nuts that hold the tears together are a lot of these are plastic they'll have plastic screws and plastic nuts and the problem with that they tend to strip and break I know some of your cheaper lights light stands that you'd find on eBay you might have an aluminum stand but your brackets and casings and the hardware might be a plastic wee nut with even plastic threads these Manfrotto's have plastic wings on the top, but as you can see, the actual nuts themselves are actually uh, are actually grade five bolts. And so these aren't gonna break, they're gonna hold the weight and they're gonna work. Another option when looking at a light stand is air cushion stands. And air cushion stands have a gas piston inside the actual stand. And what they do is, is that if you have to lower a light, it's really high off the ground Let's pretend we have something really heavy on here and we have to lower it. It's actually going to cushion it as it falls down so you're not supporting all that weight as it comes down and thumping it on the ground. I've seen a lot of accidents happen this way. So an air cushion stand is a plus if you can get one, but if not, just make sure you're getting something that is going to hold the weight and has the proper hardware for each of the segments or tiers. Another thing to look out for also is to look for the actual not only the maximum height of what the stand can go up to, but also look at the actual collapse height. I know some light stands don't fold up into near as small sections as some of the others. And if you're traveling in a small car or a vehicle or a trunk where you might not have, you know, 60 inches of space, you only have 43 inches of space, you know, you might want to verify and make sure that the light stand is going to collapse. Most light stands come in three to four section tiers, should I say, segments to go up. So that's aluminum stands. Now we're going to talk about C-stands. And in the motion picture industry where I've worked quite a bit, these are kind of the go-to go -to means of supporting, especially large continuous lights such as large tungsten lights, uh, airy lights, you know, anything that's going to take a lot of weight, these are it. Most of them are made out of steel and which they obviously can hold a lot of weight. A lot of them come with your standard bun on top so you can accept whatever size of brackets you want. On top of this we have a Matthews Hollywood head here and these are very classic uh, types of heads where you can put rods in them to move stuff around. You could put a mic stand in here, you could put a, a smaller speed rail sizes. Uh, these are your basic, uh, for the photography world most of you might see these know these as super clamps. and so. These work really well, they hold a lot of weight. And with the C stands, 
This is probably roughly about 15 pounds. Basically these fold up into a C shape so they could be transported. They're not fully collapsible like a regular aluminum light stand or type of tripod stand, but they will hold up to the weight and you can get into one of these for about $175 to $200 depending on where you look. The last type of light stand, I get a lot of emails on this, is boom stands. And when we're talking about boom stands, I get so many emails asking me about what type of boom stand I use and why. Well, for my work, primarily as a strobus, where I'm using off-camera speed lights and not putting large mono lights or large studio lights up, a lightweight solution is this Manfrotto. The model number is the 420B convert boom stand and you can get it with or without a sandbag obviously you're going to need a sandbag to balance this and what's great about this this actual stand is that it's lightweight it's aluminum so it folds up uh, only weighs about as much as a regular light stand and you can use it either as a boom or you can use it as a regular stand and I'm going to demonstrate that I'm going to unclick the sandbag obviously I'm keeping a hand on here at all times because we don't want to drop our light you're gonna lose my light off frame for just a minute. And this is just gonna slide right in and drop into place. Tighten it down. And now, it is the same as any regular light stand. And it folds up, it's portable, it's convenient. The only issue with this, that it is an aluminum stand and it only can support so much weight. I'd be very hesitant putting a large light on here. Right now I've got a do-it-yourself DIY beauty dish that is coupled to a Nikon SB800. This is made out of plastic, it only weighs like a pound, that'd be fine. However, if I were to have a monolight on here, such as an Elenchrom or something like that, which this beauty dish is made for, I'd be really hesitant to use this type of boom with this size of modifier. Be advised that when you expand your boom, There we go. With the way physics works, the longer I telescope my boom out, the more the weight moves away and the more it's going to fall or not hold. So when you're looking at one of these, you need to make sure that you read the specifications and check with the retailer, check the specifications page of whatever you're looking at to buy one of these, wherever you're looking, and check the weight capacity that it can hold when it's fully extended versus closed. A lot of your cheaper boom stands are only going to advertise the weight that it can hold when it's fully you know closed up. They'll say yeah this will hold 20 pounds when in fact if I open this all the way up it can only hold maybe four pounds and that would might be a big issue for some of you. So this is the Manfrotto 420B convert boom stand. It's great for small speed lights, small modifiers. Uh, if you have a smaller Alien B, I wouldn't hesitate to put this on here. Just be, make sure you use your sandbags appropriately. Make sure that we are safe. We're gonna put sandbags on the bottom of this and weight it down, because the last thing we want is this hair light falling on someone and hurting them. Uh, I know this was a quick tip this week, but just be cautious when buying your light stands. Make sure you get them from a reputable dealer.